Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and um, for our tip and trick of the week, I'm going to show you how to do a gradated set of colors. Maybe you're doing a sky, maybe you're doing water, whatever. Maybe you might do some other colors, but it doesn't really matter. But how you get this blended using a medium. Now, on my other video, I showed you how to use just water and do it, which is kind of unique to acrylics the way we do it. But I'm all, maybe on a large painting. Here's why you might want to do this on a very large canvas you might find that everything's drying out too fast even using water. So this is a technique you might use where you want to have a nice gradated um, set of colors. So what we're going to be using for our medium today is gloss, medium, and varnish by Liquitex. All right, we use that. And then I'm going to be using, um, the colors I'm using are Aurelian Yellow. It's a Series 7 paint by Matisse. It's a marvelous color. If you haven't tried this, I recommend it. Uh, titanium white, but I want to use it in the flow. Matisse makes uh, two uh, types of, of professional acrylics. One is flow, which is a little bit more liquidy, more like um, like cream, like heavy cream, and then your uh, structure, which is thicker. And I think if you're trying to do something smooth like this, that you would be better off to use the colors in flow. I didn't happen to have any flow blue on me, so I just decided I'd show you how you could use you could use the phthalo. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a, I've got the um, the colors put out on the palette like this. Here, here's my colors. And then I'm going to take a little a little bowl because this is runny. I mean, let's just let's face it, this is runny. I'm going to take some Liquitex gloss medium and varnish, and I'm going to pour a little in this bowl. Now, if someone says, what is the ratio for this? Well. Um, I would probably keep the ratio to about 30% of the uh, medium and varnish. You could possibly go up to 50%, but when you start losing your, you know, your colors, then then you want to dial it back. All right, so let's put this out of the way for a second. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. I got this nifty little uh, border uh, by taping it, and I'm painting on Century or Paramount uh, canvas. It's a 100% cotton canvas. It's just so it's real canvas. There's 10 sheets to a tablet. It's real canvas. It's nice for these small demonstrations. So this is what we're. This is our goal. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I have um, using artist tape. I have taped down the uh, sides of my little canvas. So I'm just gonna tear some off. I'm gonna show you a little trick. You put it right even here with the sides of this. Uh, right the edge of the canvas like that right even then I'm going to do another piece that sort of overlaps like that I want to overlap it just like that could have used wider tape but I think for me it just sort of helps to because I didn't want a real wide border now the next trick is take your palette knife and burnish these edges down this is real important you could use the back of a spoon uh, back of a palette knife um, you want to burnish these edges down like that. And I'm going to move my ruler out of the way. Like that. Now this is, uh, you could use really any set of colors. It doesn't matter, lighter and darker colors. And we're, we use real artist tape. Don't use uh, masking tape or something. Use real artist tape. Find that at the art store. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is take a, a, a clean brush. And I'm not going to do it that much differently than I do with the water, but somewhat. All right, so Here's some white paint. You can see that. And I'm going to just scoop up some uh, of the, the varnish like this, the medium and varnish. And it's a gloss color, but you could use matte if you didn't like the shine. And I'm going to put some white with it. So I'm going to mix some of this into the white. Might as well just mix it. As long as I have the white's got the, um, the, the varnish on it, that's fine. So I've mixed that. Now I want to come over the top, top of the canvas. I'm just going to paint over the tape. Now, I try not to shove um, paint under the tape, even though we burnished it down. It's um, not the best idea to do that. So we're we're doing this. And if you must stop in the middle of a, a run here, like here, and you don't want to push, uh, obviously push the paint under, lift your brush up just slightly like you're taking off on a runway. Now the advantage of this is, is what? Why would you want to do this? Well, let me just rinse the brush. Now I did the white on there. I'm going to rinse the brush, wipe it. I'm going to start down here. Now this white won't dry for a long time. That's why we put this with it. And again, I'm going to scoop up some of the uh, medium like this on my brush and put it in the phthalo blue like that. 
just just like that. You see how I'm doing that, okay? Now just mix that in there. Now I'm going to start down at the bottom because that's my darkest area. This is my darkest area down here at the bottom. Feels like I got a little bit of um, white on this brush. I didn't get it all off. I'm going to just mix all this blue in there because it doesn't feel dark enough to me. So here we go. If you don't get enough pigment, you've got to add more paint. Now you see how I'm coming across like this. All right, there we go, like that. I'm going to come on up like this. All right, right, paint right over the tape. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now I've got about oh I don't know it's about three fingers worth. Now I'm going to add over here in this. Remember we did two white sections. I'm going to just pull up some yellow and I have blue on my brush and into the white and I'm going to make this pretty sort of green color, sort of this real pretty green color. Maybe add a little more blue to it like that. Then I want to come right up here like this and skip us. I'm still skipping these spaces. I still like it. Well, maybe we'll come right next to it. Let's just show you what happens if you do that. We're going to come right next to it like that. And I'm going to wipe the paint off my brush and then come up into the white like this. Make another little stripe, say, here of something that's a little lighter like that. See that? Another little bit that's lighter. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. Now we've got these one, two, three, four sections of paint. I'm going to switch brushes, grab another brush. Oh, here's something. When you start using medium and varnish on a brush, um, varnish and mediums are very hard on your brush. They're very difficult to rinse out. So what I want you to be pay special attention to is washing your brushes out. However you wash them, do it longer, whatever you did. Okay, so here's a nice uh, number 12 uh, ruby satin silver brush. It's a bright. And I'm going to start off here down at the bottom, and I'm going to start pulling this across just like this. Start overlapping these colors. See that? All right, now my brush is slightly damp, but that's all I've done. Now I'm going to keep coming, keep overlapping, keep overlapping, just keep overlapping, and I'm going to go right up into this white color. And I might put a little bit of medium on my brush, just a little bit of medium on my brush, like that. So instead of water, I'm going to put a little tiny bit of medium on the brush to see how much nicer it's flowing. A little bit of medium on the brush, come all the way up to the top tape. Now, where it's not covering, for instance, like right here maybe, you the thing about this is if you're doing it with water, you really can't go over it very much. And the reason being is because it starts to dry and it doesn't want to play with you. But the advantage of doing this with, say, um, putting a medium like is you can come back here. Let's just grab some more. A dark blue. Say I want it darker down here. I wasn't happy with that. So I'm going to come back here with some dark blue. And then I might put a little yellow on the brush here, just on the tip. And I'm going to just start changing these colors. I'm going to come up here like that. Maybe I'll grab a little white. You can mix and play with this on the canvas. And as you go, wipe your brush off like this. Wipe it off on a rag. And you can go over these gradations a little bit. You can play with these a lot longer. And some people out there really enjoy just messing with stuff. Just messing with stuff. So I'm going to bring a little more blue up here. Maybe I wanted a little bit a little bit higher color up here. And and this is not how I would do it when I was using just water, but you can do it. Absolutely can do it when you've got a medium because it stays wet so much longer you can play with it. The only thing is when you start bringing white down into here you will lose some of your dark value. So if I don't want to lose that I will have to come back and mix a little bit more color. But I can do that. Now right here what I might do is just switch brushes now. Maybe take a clean brush. It doesn't have any paint on it. Again I can keep playing with this and then pull this across like this very gently. Clean brush, no paint. Just come on up here like this, keep overlapping, very gently, very gently like that, back and forth. Maybe I'll put a tiny bit of medium on my brush so that I have a little flow. I want, think I want a little white up here. Maybe I want it a little lighter. So I can, uh, you can add, you, you can um, experiment longer and not ruin the effect. You see that? You can experiment much longer and not ruin the effect. And, Again, if I wipe my brush off, 
take a little more phthalo blue. Suppose I want it much darker at the bottom. Um, because it's still wet, you can go back and alter things. And that's the advantage of doing this. And you've got to imagine if you're doing a great big canvas now, great big canvas, where would that be helpful? And maybe I'm just just messing with these, this little gradation right down here at the bottom. You see that where I made it a little bit darker? I like all this. And, I, and because it's still wet, and I can just wipe the paint off the brush like this. I can still fool with it. But please notice I'm coming all the way across the paint, all the way across the tape, and I'm um, not pushing hard. So that's, that's um, I think we've got a little bit of a glare here. This is actually covered with paint, but let me just darken our canvas up a little bit here. There you go. You can see there's a little bit of a light spot right there, but that's not in the uh, actual my actual picture. That's just where the light from the camera is doing that. Let me darken this up a bit. All right, so you can see there. Now you you have that advantage of doing these great gradations. And if, for instance, let's just say for all fun, that let's just say you wanted it lighter up here. What would happen if you took a little white paint and came up here like this, all the way across? Now you don't want to stop in the middle. And did that? You can fool with this a little bit. See that? I mean, you really have some options of fooling with your gradations a little bit more than you would have if um, you had just used water. You have a lot longer time. And again, I can just start with a clean brush. I'll rinse it off, wipe it off like this. This is, um, and then just very gently come across here. I got a little water on here. That's not good. Yeah, careful when you're rinsing off because the water will definitely make a little spot. All right, see how you can still come over. That's the trick with using something like this. Now your next step is um, to do a hair dryer and dry it. So I'm just going to take a hair dryer, dry all this. Let you see how I'm doing that. I hold it very close. I'm drying that. Hold it across here like this with a hair dryer. One thing you can do with a hair dryer that's sort of a neat trick. You can take like um, a ruler, something like this, and you can make a shield and force the air back down on your picture. If you're doing a large canvas, I would say use a piece of cardboard to dry your uh, picture. You want to dry it. So that's 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 dry. Now again. Even though we were just kind of went over this, this brush has picked up varnish. And normally in my studio, I have a special varnish brush because varnish is so hard to get out of um, out of brushes. So keep that in mind when you're using a um, when you're using any kind of medium, it requires more diligence on your part, much more diligence on your part to. Uh, uh, clean your brushes. Alright, so see how I'm pulling this, this tape down like that? Now, I didn't get this as uh, squished down as I might have, which is the only reason I have that little bit of uh, canvas that's not perfect. But again, I want you to kind of see what, how this is going like this, and I'm going to pull off the tape like this. I'm just going to take this tape, see, I'm just going to pull it off. There you go. And then I'll just pull it around here like this. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's our, um, that's our gradation. That's how we did it. We used uh, gloss, medium, and varnish. Um, I like, it's a little thicker. It's a little bit heavier than if you use just pure uh, varnish. This is called glazing medium. It's also designed for doing that. It will, you know, it's a fluid medium. Um, Try some different ones. See which ones you like. Just uh, keep in mind that if you need to work your, your paint a little longer, then that's something you can add to it. You don't have to add it to everything, but that's certainly a, that's certainly a good trick. So I'm just going to uh, move our picture over here like this, and I'm going to put it next to here. Kind of show you this is what we, this is what we created. That works really well. So thanks for watching. I hope this was fun. I'll see you next time for uh, for tips and tricks. I do a um, wonderful classes. I've got a great master class series. Um, if you go to gingercook.gallery, check it out and see what happens when you um, you know learn to paint oceans. 
And if you're going to do a large ocean painting, you might want to incorporate some incorporate some of these ideas. So thanks very much. Um, also look at my Ginger Cook Live uh, on Pinterest. It's all one word. And um, uh, look forward to more videos. It's been fun uh, sharing this with you. This is Ginger Cook saying goodbye.